All right, well, I was going to do a video on my irrefutable scientific proof that Tonewood exists, but hold on a second. We, we have a new limited edition pedal to talk about, so never mind. We're going to do that. <laughs> I cannot believe I shot this whole video with that glare in my glasses. So as I mentioned in my previous pedal video, this happens every few months. A company drops a new limited edition pedal, it sells out within a couple of hours, flippers then put it up for sale for two and three times the amount, everyone complains about it, wash, rinse, repeat. And if you're interested in watching that video, I should have it tagged somewhere along the screen, I think. But sure enough, it's happened again, and this time it is the way huge deep state overdrive. Now disclaimer that if you've already been subscribed to the channel, you're probably tired of hearing by now, but I am a Dunlop artist. However, I had no heads up on this pedal. It was actually sold through Reverb, so I bought it on Reverb for retail and did not contact my Dunlop rep about it. And Dunlop also has no idea that I'm making this video. So with that being said, I was lucky enough to actually snag one of these, and today I'll be going over from the simple how does it sound all the way up to is it worth what people are selling these things for. <laughs> Now I'm going to be very honest, I have a very lukewarm attitude towards Klon style overdrives. They sound good in certain applications, and I've owned several Klon style overdrives throughout the years. The EHX Soul Food, Mythos Mjolnir, and then what I ultimately ended up keeping as my Klon style overdrive, the MXR Sugar Drive. Now they all sound good, but I find that they don't have as much softness and give to them when they're not through a cranked amp. Although if the amp is cranked and already kind of gritty, they really excel. And in those cases is when I typically put one on my board. When I can take the Z or other amp up past two or three, that's when I throw a Klon style on my board. So because of this, even though I am a massive WayHuge fanboy, I have never purchased the WayHuge Conspiracy Theory. So unfortunately, I can't really weigh in on the differences between the conspiracy theory and the deep state, but the deep state is supposed to be a conspiracy theory only with germanium diodes that have that special measurement that the ones in the actual Klon did, which from my understanding is like they were underperforming germanium diodes, so they were kind of broken? I, I don't know. I'm not an electronics engineer. Now, side note, I was kind of surprised when I found out that this pedal was coming out in conjunction with Joe Bonamassa. I don't follow him closely, but I feel like he doesn't use clons enough to be, like, synonymous with a clon. At least not enough to make a special edition and hand number and sign all of these pedals. But hey, it's a cool little project. So with all that being said, what does it sound like and what are my thoughts on it? <laughs>
put it simply, it sounds great. It actually does have a little bit more give or sag to it than other Klon style pedals that I've played, and it's also friendlier with clean amps. My sugar drive can sound a little sterile at cleaner amp volume, so it is kind of nice that the Deep State has kind of a softness to it. It also plays well with others. That's the other thing I found about Klon clones. They can be a little persnickety about what other overdrives they want to interact with. Sometimes that sterile sound that I described gets worse when it gets paired with other overdrives, and then other times they complement each other. And the Deep State just seems to have a broader range of overdrive friends that it has. So ultimately, it sounds really good. It's probably a top 10 overdrive that I've ever played, and it's certainly the best Klon clone that I've ever played. But again, I'm not a Klon aficionado, so you may want to take my advice with a grain of salt. Whatever magic that germanium diodes that don't work properly are supposed to have, this does seem to have it. Now, my only big caveat with all of this is that I have never played the conspiracy theory that this is supposed to be based on. So the stock conspiracy theory may sound just like this. I really don't know. But based solely on what I know about germanium characteristics, I would have to say that the things I like about this pedal seem to match up with what germanium gives you. Now, ultimately, I do plan on getting a conspiracy theory to kind of test those two out, but that'll be down the road. Alrighty, so let's check out Deep State prices a couple months after launch. Yikes! So, uh, yeah. As of the recording of this video, you can have your very own Huge Deep State for anywhere from $500 to $1,000. Now, as usual, not many people are paying the actual outrageous asking price for this pedal. Reverb actually has the average right now from $301 to $381. But in the past few days since I've been writing and scripting this video, the average ones have actually been selling for $400 to $500. So that is actually kind of wild that there's been a drop in the price, but then a recent increase in the price. As I talked about in my last pedal flipping video, typically you see these prices kind of slowly go down until they hit a plateau. Now I want you to keep in mind that the original conspiracy theory is still made and you can still get it right now for $150 new. And Reverb right now seems to have them used from $109 all the way down to $75. The low part being if you want to deal with someone who may or may not be a crackhead. But yeah, there you go. We've experienced this limited edition phenomenon yet again. <laughs> is a Miami Dolphins mini helmet. It is signed by Jim Kick, the running back of the 1972 Dolphins, who were the only team to have a complete undefeated season in the NFL. No, you did not accidentally just click on a sports video. Give me a second, this will all relate. Now here's the thing. This helmet is practically useless. I cannot wear it to play football. I can't really do anything with it. It's not worth very much, but it is worth about five times what it would be if it didn't have his signature on it. And the only thing I do with it is put it on the mantle and tell people that I 
have a helmet signed by the running back of the 1972 Dolphins. It's a piece of memorabilia, and that's exactly what memorabilia is. Something that is completely useless, but it makes you feel warm and fuzzy inside because there's something about it that means something to you. And to be honest, I kind of think this is where we've gotten to with limited edition music gear now. When I did my pedal flipping video on the JHS solo boost, I was on the cusp of calling it memorabilia. It had a limited amount, but it was just because they had stopped production of it, but it wasn't really signed or anything. But with the Deep State, we are officially there. Now, the Deep State is certainly usable. I, I guess it would be the equivalent of a full-size football helmet. But, like, this is signed and hand-numbered by a famous musician. This is not something I'm throwing on my board to go play a summer festival in 90-degree heat. I will most likely use this for recording, but at the end of the day, this is something that's going to be displayed in my studio, and when my guitarist friends come over, I'm going to say, look at what I've got, and it's going to make me feel warm and fuzzy inside. And as I point out in my last video, I think you just have to treat these things as collectibles at this point. You can't expect something that's made in limited numbers and signed and all that to sell for the same price and be as available as its stock counterpart. That's just not the way that supply and demand works. <laughs> Should you buy this thing? Well, I don't know, but let's run down a few scenarios and I'll give you a yes or no. I really want a clone that's close to the original. I'm going to say probably no. From my understanding, the conspiracy theory is a tweaked clone that George Tripps did. So if it's a tweaked clone and they're just changing out the diodes, I don't think that's going to undo all of the things that were tweaked. So no, I don't think that this is necessarily going to get you as close to a clone as you possibly can be. I want a clone style pedal on my board. Absolutely no. There are a thousand of those available for well under $500. I'm a big Way Huge fanboy and I want a limited edition Way Huge pedal. Yes, as long as you're cool with it being a piece of memorabilia that can also be played, that's fine. As a matter of fact, that's why I'm hanging on to mine. I'm a Bonamassa fanboy and I want a limited Bonamassa pedal. Again, yes. And you know what? You being a Bonamassa fan, you're probably used to this and have 10 other things that are signed by Bonamassa. I own a conspiracy theory and want to upgrade. See, this is a difficult one because, again, I haven't played a conspiracy theory. But I lean heavily towards no. I just can't believe that this sounds four to five times better than a conspiracy theory does, which is the price difference you would be paying between a normal conspiracy theory. I just want to complain about flippers selling things that I wasn't interested in anyways. It's no for me, dog. A lot of people complaining weren't interested in these anyways. I'm a lawyer with a Bentley and a custom shop Les Paul. Should I buy this? You know, this one is actually pretty easy, too. Uh, yes, you should buy it, and you should buy two of them. Um, one to keep in the box and keep pristine and never play, and then the other one to put on your pedal board. Uh, that way you can wear one out and keep the other one clean. Though, let's be very honest about this. That pedal board is not leaving your bedroom. I hope that helps. <laughs> You've heard my sound clips of it, you've heard me talk about it, and now you can decide if this is worth four to five Benjamins. Now, I think that this was a no-brainer at 179, and I actually commend Reverb Dunlop and Bonamasta. Bonamasta? Masta? Masta? For pricing this at 179, because I think they easily could have done 250 or so and still sold out. Because I feel like I don't see it very often where a pedal has rare components in it and it is limited edition and it's under $200. But really, in my opinion, in practicality, this is not your go-to to add a clone style to your pedal board. This is so you can have a little piece of guitar lore. And I guess, technically, there's really no price on that. <laughs>
We're just going to leave it and assume it's still recording, which is probably a bad idea.